Hello, Janessa Keller here with just one more thing. I'm going to teach you today how to work an I-cord bind off. To do this, you're going to need a project that you've been working. This one happens to be in the round. Um, it does work for flat projects as well, but for this one, um, it's a, a cowl project that has been worked in the round. This is just a small example. Now, I'm teaching you the I-cord bind off because for the project we did an I-cord cast on. So this is a bind off that would match and it is a fairly stretchy cast on and bind off. So after you've worked your project, this happens to be a two stitch I-cord bind off. It could also be, you know, three, four stitches, whatever the pattern calls for. I'm going to work this with um, a DPN, I find it a lot easier than trying to scooch all these stitches around on your cord. Now, what we want to do to start off with is to take our working yarn. And I'm gonna cast on, using the backwards loop, two stitches. These are our I-cord stitches. Um, later, when I get to the end, I'm going to want to graft these two stitches on to the two stitches that I have left at the end. So before I get going too far, I'm going to take a locking stitch marker and I'm just going to slide it through those two stitches so that they're a lot easier to find later on. can get started with the bind off. Just try to ignore that other other needle. I'm going to knit one maybe oh, there we go. Knit one, knit two together through the back loop. Okay? So you're taking the last I cord stitch and the first life stitch from the pattern and you're knitting those two together through the back loop. Now you're going to move these two stitches back to your right hand needle. I apologize, your left hand needle. And you're going to knit one. two together through the back loop. And if this little marker gets away, just kind of tug it down. Move them back to your left hand needle. And you just repeat this all the way around. together through the back loop. Move them back to your left hand needle. Here pretty soon you'll be able to see the I cord kind of start to emerge. If you find that the I cord is too tight, that it, it seems to be pulling your work together instead of allowing for a stretchy bind off, go up a needle size um, to work your stitches and just keep them really loose. And that will help a lot with the stretchiness. Once you get all the way around, I'll show you how to finish this off. I have come to these are my two I-cord stitches, and this is my last stitch for the project. And then over here, I'll have these two live stitches to graft together. So to work this last little bit, I'm going to knit one. And knit these last two stitches together through the back loop.
Now my working needle is empty. No more stitches. I've got the two I-cord stitches on this DPN. I'm just gonna leave them there for a second. Pull up another DPN. And I'm going to slip it into these two stitches that were held on the stitch marker. And I kind of do that by kind of tugging and pulling them out as far as I can, making them as loose as I can, and then just slipping that needle through there. And once I've got them on the needle, I can take this stitch marker off. to cut my working yarn. Thread it onto a darning needle. to set up we're just going to Kitchener stitch these together so to set that up so I'm going to go through this front one curl wise leave it on the needle the back one knit wise leave it on the needle now I'm going to knit into the front and then purl through that second stitch, leaving it on the needle. And then I'm going to purl through the back needle and knit through that second stitch, leaving it on the needle. And then we're going to knit the front needle and purl the back needle tight and there we go we've grafted that edge together now this is already on your darning needle so you might as well just go ahead and tuck that end into your eye cord and just kind of weave that tail end in and then you don't have to worry about it again just like that and there you go you have finished your bind off I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you. Bye.